I spent over two weeks using Codex and Cloth Code, testing them on real projects and picking up every single pro and con so that you don't have to. This video is brought to you by my own experience using Cloth Code and Codex and also the reaction of the community amid recent releases from OpenAI and Anthropic. So we'll cover what each tool does better, where they fall apart and which one fits your workflow depending on what you're trying to build. Let's jump right into seven surprising truths that I learned in the trenches codex versus cloud code let's start with a big one speed versus depth so this is something that i have experienced and a lot of people also have the same opinion as well which is that cloud code is really fast like stupid fast you can store it a problem and it'll spit out hundreds of lines of codes in seconds on the other hand though uh, codex is a little bit slower uh, but you know it has the ability to dig deeper into your projects but sometimes it can be a little bit overthinking you may give it a really simple task but it weighs thousands of tokens you know making this problem much more complicated this is the experience that i have and also the experience of a lot of people so let's jump right in to see if it's actually true I compare cloud code and codex side by side with the same problem. Now let hit enter at the same time to see which one finished first. So as you can see here, cloud code has finished the task much faster than codex. But again, speed is not always the winning factor. You know, sometimes you want to let your coding agent spend a little bit more time to exploring the code base to learn your task more carefully. So yeah, as you can see here, um, codex has also finished the task. And it gives real detail, really comprehensive summary of my project comparing to Cloud Code, which is also really good. But I think here, uh, Codex, even though slower, does a better job of summarizing my project. So again, if you don't mind being a little bit slower, I think Codex is the option for you because, you know, it goes in depth to your project and it has the ability to analyze your task really carefully. But thinking for too long is not always a good thing. As you can see here, uh, people report that, you know, sometimes uh, Codex is over-engineering. You know, they spend too much time wasting too much tokens just for really simple tasks. I'll we'll also say that, you know, uh, Codex is sometimes overly deterministic or like it overly concise, overly reductive. So that's speed and depth. I think it's one of the most important factors that you have to look at when choosing your model. But let's move on to a much more practical uh, aspect that I think most people are concerned about, which is pricing. At first glance, Cloud Code and Codex have pretty much the same pricing, but the real cost is not in dollars, it's in the limit. So as you know that recently, Cloud Code has pretty strict usage caps. And I don't know your feeling, but you know when I'm in the flow and I hit my rate limits, and it got to wait another five hours to continue my work, which is really annoying. Codex with ChatGPT plans is just much more generous. Like I can code for hours and it works consistently well. And if you're a Cloud fanboy, I mean like just don't go to credit these days, you know, because Cloud Code is brutally obliterated with their new rate limits. So no longer five hour limit, but weekly limit on $20 plan, which is crazy. Somebody even said that it feels like a pay trial now, like you spend $20 and it, it still feels like you're just using the free plan, which is crazy. Another good thing about Codex is that, you know, you can track usage by using the slash command status. I can see my five hour limit uh, as well as the weekly limit. Here, I just use like 2% of my five hour limit and only 5% of my weekly limit, you know, even though I've been using Codex a lot in my project recently. Anthropic is notoriously known to be not really transparent about usage. Until recently, they just uh, added a new slash command, which is usage to let you track your um, weekly usage. As you can see here, I also been using Cloud Codes a lot and I've used up like 15% of the entire uh, weekly limit. But as I said earlier, Codex is much more generous with their rate limits. So in terms of pricing, Codex is a clear winner here. Now let's talk about features. I know you guys are probably most concerned about features. Okay, Cloud Code is much more expensive, but it has more features, which is true for sure. The number of built-in features in Codex is pretty limited. It has some basic features like, you know, connecting to your MCB servers, or maybe you can uh, add slash commands into your project. And that's it. You don't have much options with Codex. Cloud Code, on the other hand, is just much more generous. You know, like, first of all, it has all the features that Codex has. And it also has one of the most pioneering features in the industry, such as, you know, sub-agents that let you delegate tasks to other agents to save your context window. 
it also have you know background engines that you know you can use to run tasks simultaneously to the main agent and it also has other uh, features like hooks or plugins and the best feature in my opinion is that you know you can actually restore checkpoints now you can see that when i hit the slack context uh, my free space or my uh, context window is about 50 percent but now when i restore checkpoint uh, to the previous chat you can see that uh, my free space is now over 68 percent and why is that important because you know when you chat with agents sometimes you make wrong moves and you want to roll back to the previous request and with restore checkpoint you can save thousands of tokens in your context window when you think well this is not the right thing i want to go back and make a better prompt as i said earlier codex is pretty limited in terms of features but what surprises me the most is that it does not even have plan mode like plan mode is probably the most basic features that all coding agents have nowadays it's very easy to use plan mode you just need to hit shift tab to go from the normal mode to the plan mode another great feature that cloudco has just released is uh plugins so plugins is just you know the combination of slash commands sub agents mcp servers and hooks what really interesting about this is that you can share your plugins with your team with your friends or with uh community for example, if I want to use this plug again from uh, GitLab, I can copy the command and just go on my plot code. It's going to download the plugins to my local from the marketplace. So very interesting feature that I will absolutely talk more in the future. So when it comes to features, I think plot code is an absolute killer. So if you're looking for a coding agent with a lot of built-in features, I think plot code is for you. But you know, just be careful with the array limits. Now let's talk about memory. So with cloud code, when you use the slash init command, a new memory file will be created inside of your project, and it is the cloud.md file. The same thing happens with uh, codex when you also use the slash init command, the agents.md file will be created. So back to my project, you can see that I just use the slash init command for uh, both codex and cloud code. And as you can see that the agent.md file has been created containing all the information about our project. The same thing also happened with uh, Cloud Code. I think Cloud Code does a better job of, you know, summarizing the code base. It has over, you know, like 200 lines. With agents.md is a little bit more concise, just like uh, 33 lines. So that's the memory file for both Codex and Cloud Code. One great thing about agents.md is that, you know, it is adopted widely by many agent providers in the market right now. But you can see that cloud code is not on this list. So my friends, you know, Anthropic is just, you know, too egocentric. We still need a separate cloud.md file in our project. But that's just not everything about memory uh, in cloud code and codex. You know, cloud code's memory is very local first. What do I mean by that? You know, when I use the slash memory command, you can see that cloud code not only has the memory of the project, which is the cloud.md file lives inside of our project. It also has memory inside of other projects. You know, it have the project memory, which is uh, here. And it's also the user memory, which is the memory uh, inside of our root directory. So why it is so interesting, you know, when you're working in many different projects with cloud code, in each project, there is going to be one separate cloud.md file. And, you know, it really signs when, you know, these projects are related to each other. So when you're working on a new feature, your agent or your cloud code will also have access to other memories inside of other projects, which is great. However, I don't think this feature is available in Codex. There is no slash memory command. So I don't have, you know, access to other memory files, just the agents.md file inside of my project. But the memory of Codex is more of a hybrid one. So what do I mean by that? Uh, you know, Codex is just not the agent that lives inside of your terminal. You can actually use Codex inside of VS Code extension, like what I do here. And the best thing about this is that, you know, all of the sections, all of the memories that you have in your Codex CLI will be synced up inside of the extension. So as you can see here, this is the task that I tell Codex to do to compare the speed between uh, cloud code. And it is the a request that I tell Codex to generate the agents.md file. So all of the memories are synced up. Another great thing about Codex is that, you know, it's not only living inside of your terminal or inside of your uh, extension, you can actually run it in the cloud. So now I'm going to tell uh, Codex Cloud to fix this issue. And you can see that there is one task currently running. When I click on it, I can see in more detail what is happening. Here's the catch, you know, you can see that 
uh, in my local or in my extension, I can actually see you what is currently happening in the cloud. So now when I click on it, I can see that, you know, this is the request that I sent in Codex Cloud. So the memory in Codex is just not about static markdown files. You can actually communicate your task, your progress with your entire team using Codex extension or Codex Cloud. So it's pretty hard saying who is the winner here because for a lot of solo developers, you know, this hybrid memory is not really useful. You know, most of the people just want their memories to be inside of their machine. So it's entirely up to your preference and your workflow to decide, you know, which type of memory is better. One last thing that I want to talk about uh, cloud code memory is that it gives you really good uh, ability to uh, manage your context. You know, when you use that slash context command, you can see visually what is currently uh, taking up your context window. You know, I can see that I have 136K token left in my context window, and I can see that the memory file take up over uh, 3K tokens and the MCP tool take up over 1K tokens. So why is that important? You know, maybe sometimes your uh, memory files are too big and they're taking too much time in your context window, or sometimes you're uh, having too much MCP servers and they're bloating your context window. So what you want to reduce them to make your context cleaner. Finally, let's talk about integration. You know, Codex, when you pay for the subscription, you're not only getting one product, you're getting a suite of really great products. You know, Codex CLI, Codex Extension, and Codex Cloud. I've talked about it earlier. So as you can see here, whenever I uh, make a PR, I always ask uh, Codex to review it and, you know, it gives really detailed instructions and detailed explanation, you know, how to make my PR better. And it also tells me what is wrong with my PR and how to resolve it. So, you know, re really good review from Codex. And not just Codex, when you pay for ChatGPT subscription, you also have really powerful chatbot with a lot of features, creating images, creating videos, or, you know, deep research, you know, just really great features within the subscription. And how about cloud code? You know, cloud code also have, you know, give up actions to review your code. But personally, I think that it uh, quality is just much worse than uh, GitHub actions from Codex. And it integration with other Anthropic products is not also really good. The only integration that I could have with cloud code and cloud desktop is, you know, getting the MCB server from cloud desktop. As you can see here on cloud desktop, I have one MCB server, which is context seven, and I can add it inside of my cloud code. So that's it. Not really many features that I can integrate from cloud code to cloud desktop or the other way around. But I think plugins may be the future for cloud code because, as I said earlier, plugins let developers share their config, share the ways they use cloud code with the community. So I think we need to wait to see that if plugins is going to be a game changer for cloud code. But for now, in terms of integration, I think Codex just has a much better ecosystem of products. So the final question is, who is the winner? And the answer is, you guys probably guessed it, it's neither of them. Why? Because, you know, large language models are not deterministic. You know, uh, one time you use Codex and it works really well, and another time you're also using Codex, but it not works as great as the previous time, and it's totally understandable because there is an element of randomness inside of uh, large language models. And it also depends on your preferences, because some people say that, you know, the user interface of cloud code is just much better, so they think cloud code is a better product. And others say that, you know, they can use Codex inside of the extension, they can have a much better UI. So they think that Codex is a better product. So it really depends on, you know, your task, your preference. And the final thing is that I think you should spend more time mastering your tool rather than arguing which one is the best, because, you know, like for what? Like if Cloud Code turns out to be a better product than Codex, it doesn't mean that it's going to 10 your performance when you use Cloud Code. It's all about learning and figure things out, you know, which product fits you most. So I want to add one more point, uh, which is that why not using both? If both Codex and Cloud Code are really great products, why not using both of them? So I can use Cloud Code to fix my bug or maybe uh, implement a new feature. After that, I can use Codex to review the code that is generated by Cloud Code because as I said earlier, Codex is really good at reviewing code and there is a built-in slash command that let Codex review your code. So I can use both Codex and Cloud Code for my workflow seamlessly. So this is my opinion and it is probably also the opinion of a lot of people in our community. But again, everyone has their own preferences and so do I. So I'm going to share my own preference when it comes to Codex versus Cloud Code. And my personal take is that I think that I'm still most of the time sticking to cloud code because, you know, I am more familiar with cloud code. I've been using cloud code for, I mean, like over six months now, and I think it's a great product. It doesn't mean that uh, Codex is not as good of a product as cloud code. It just means that I'm just sticking up to what I am familiar with. 
and I spent months mastering my skills with cloud code. Like I want to hit the learning curve once again with Codex. I can use Codex on a very uh, basic level, but you know to really deep dive inside of the product, I think I gotta you know spend a lot of time researching and reading a lot of docs. And I already did it with uh, cloud code. I don't want to do the same thing with Codex because it's going to waste a lot of time. Finally, I really love the built-in features in cloud code, you know, like plan mode, restore checkpoints of agents, you name it. These are, you know, the pioneering and groundbreaking features that cloud code has introduced. I think in the future, Codex will also release these features. But for now, I think cloud code is the only coding agent that has all of these great functionalities. And yes, you're right, I am a cloud fanboy, but it doesn't mean that I hate Codex. Codex is a great product. And I think I would continue using Codex and cloud code at the same time. And I think it is the opinion that you should take as well. There's no single superior product here. Everything has its own pros and cons. I think you just spend more time mastering your tool and you know, like uh, understanding what is needed in your workflow instead of going on Reddit and argue, you know, which is the better coding agent, which is totally nonsense. So stop chasing the high, pick your own tool and learn its quirks. Also check out these videos if you want to learn more about specific context engineering tips for codex and plot code. See you in the next video.